welcome back to open med school i am dr andrews principal pk das institute of medical sciences today we are going to discuss competency 6.3 related to the lymphatic system metastasis of cancer cells i will start with a case this is a history of a 54 year old man presented with epigastric pain De decrease appetite and significant weight loss that is 8 kg for the last 6 5 months he noted a lump on the left side of the neck for the last 15 days on examination he had 3 into 4 cm hard non tender lump in the left supraclavicular region sorry here you can see the lymph node between the two heads of the stenomastoids so this is the presentation so we look into what is this sign called what is the likely cause i will explain the anatomical basis of this lymph node enlargement this is left supraclavicular lymph node which is enlarged and the left supraclavicular lymph node if enlarged is called the virchow's node and the sign is called rosier's sign so here the 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 sign is called rosier's sign enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node is called virchow's node remember it is the left supraclavicular lymph node if enlarged is the virchow's node right one is not called virchow's node this is when enlarged is called the rosier's sign it is one of the signs of intra abdominal malignancy and most commonly gastric carcinoma remember testicular malignancy can also metastasize there what is metastasis migration of the tumor cells producing a lesion distant to the primary site is called metastasis and where is it is located the virchow's node is located in the left supraclavicular fossa and is in the venous angle that is at the junction of the left subclavian vein and internal jugular vein so this is the supraclavicular fossa and as mentioned the lymph node on this side is called the virchow's node the most common malignancy is gastric malignancy in our patient he had loss of appetite significant weight loss suggesting that it is likely to be from the in abdomen that is stomach but it is well known that various other tumors especially breast lung esophageal malignancy genito urinary tract including testicular malignancy in males cervical cancer uterine cancer ovarian cancer the bladder cancer and even prostate cancer can metastasize to this region there are reports of cns tumors like oligodendroglioma glioblastoma and ependymoma these are tumors arising from the glial tissues of the central nervous system that is brain metastasis can also rarely occur here but they are very rare and the uh, incidence of malignancy metastasizing to this region varies from 0.1 to 33% in various studies let us look into what is the mechanism of this there are mainly two lymphatic trunks on the left side you have got a thoracic duct and on the right side we have got a right lymphatic duct 75% of the lymphatic drainage that is both lower limbs abdomen left side of the thorax left upper limb and left side of the head and neck drains into the left side in the, along with the thoracic duct so the thoracic duct joins at the venous angle so this is the venous angle that is angle formed between the internal jugular vein where the thoracic duct is joining so this is the subclavian vein this is the internal jugular vein and here the venous angle where the thoracic duct joins there 
so it's an important point to remember a few points regarding thoracic duct <coughs> the length of thoracic duct is approximately 45 cm almost equal to that of the spinal cord diameter is just remember 5 mm so length is 45 cm the diameter is 5 mm three anatomical landmarks you should remember that is t12 t5 and c7 the thoracic duct is formed as a continuation of the cisterna cavity that is it is at the it is continuing as the you can see this is passing through the diaphragm through the aortic hiatus approximately at around t12 it is ascending upwards on the right side you have got the acicus vein and on the left side you have got the thoracic aorta at the level of t12 t5 this will cross to the opposite side and ascends upwards and at the level of c7 it is joining the venous angle as i already mentioned this is the venous angle it is the in, the left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein and in between the thoracic duct is joining infra diaphragmatic conditions there is any malignancy or a tumor starting in the below the diaphragm including testis it is the lymphatic drainage is through the thoracic duct that is why the tumor cells pass and produce a lymph node enlargement and here it is in the left supraclavicular fossa it is called the virchow's node this limb this left lymphatic duct is called the thoracic duct on the right side it is called the right lymphatic duct the left lymphatic duct is otherwise called thoracic duct the other names are alimentary duct cailliferous duct van hones canal all these are other names for the thoracic duct so it's important point to remember this is a simple diagram so you can draw this so this is a cisterna cavity it is passing through the diaphragm t12 level it is passing between the acicus vein and the thoracic aorta it at the level of t5 it crosses to the opposite side it ascends and joins at the level of c so in this session if you have learned about the lymphatic drainage of whole body dividing into the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct and the thoracic duct is situated in the para vertebral region from t12 to the root of the neck the main tributaries i already discussed and it drains 75% of the body all regions except the right arm right breast and right lung and right side of the head and neck all other regions are draining through the thoracic duct and the clinical relevance is because of this infra diaphragmatic lesions usually produce enlargement of the left supraclavicular lymph node and the enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node is called the virchow's node and the sign is called trossier sign hope it is clear to you in the next session we will be continuing with other abnormalities of the lymphatic system